and welcome back to WCCF Tech TV everyone it's me Keith again and today we're taking a look at something a little bit different and a whole lot cheaper now the G4560 is an entry level in the Pentium processor family now in the past I wouldn't have given the Pentium line even a second glance even with the overclocking friendly uh, G3258 from the Haswell era. Sure, you could clock it up really high and it had really fast single core performance, but at the end of the day, you still only had two cores and two threads. And at the time, there's a lot of games coming out that needed four threads. So thinking back to some of the Far Cry games that were one of them. But we did look at this earlier with something like a GTX 750 Ti to see what a dual core versus other CPUs. Anyway, that card's up there. You can take a look at that video if you want to to get a little more insight on what I'm talking about. Now, I never had much of an issue with the Core i3. In fact, we've done quite a bit of coverage on the i3 in the past, especially with the Skylake i3s and uh, some base clock overclocking. Sit, catch that in the channel here. I'll put a card in that one for that one. Now, the new Pentiums brought hyper threading to the dual core Pentium line. So we're looking at a $64 processor being the G4560. Now there is the 4620 and the 4600. Those carry the better iGPU and a slightly bumped clock. So with the 4560, $64 MSRP, we snagged ours online for 60 bucks. It comes with the, uh, the Intel HD 610 graphics versus the 630 and comes in a clock at, at 3.5 gigahertz. Now, what this does is it allows Intel to be a little bit more competitive on the low end. So where this market was dominated by the Athlon X4s, whether it be the 860K, 880K, or 845, those were quad core um, debate on the module versus cores deal. Either way, it was a quad threaded chip for about the same price as what these are coming in at. But we're not here to compare those two chips. What we're here to do today is to take the Pentium G4650, 4560, whew, so many numbers there. Anyway, taking those that CPU and seeing what Radeon RX series graphics card you should pair it with and how they perform. Now taking a, a quick look at the Pentium G4560 itself, we, like I said, a dual core quad threaded chip with 3.5 gigahertz. There's no turbo on this. The, the i3s and down don't get the turbo with three megabytes of cache and a TDP of 54 watts. It does come with a cooler, but it's kind of not exactly the greatest cooler in the world, but it will suffice. You can get away with it just fine if you want to. For comparative purposes, and I need to stress this, I don't know if I can stress this enough, we will be comparing it to results that you would get with an Intel i7 7700K at 4.5 gigahertz. This is not a comparison of the Pentium and the i7 to see which one's faster. The i7 is clearly faster. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the purpose here is to show what the graphics card unrestrained looks like versus what it would look like on the Pentium. So you can see a delta versus, and how much is the Pentium holding back the graphics card? That's what we're looking at. So you can take the price differential. I mean, we're talking about nearly a $300 price difference between these two chips. Again, not here to compare the Pentium to the i7 to see which one you could get. The i7 only exists for comparison purposes to see the absolute most performance that these graphics cards could achieve and then you decide for yourself whether the Delta it's worth spending more or if the Pentium would do just fine for you. We will be looking at this on our Asus uh, Maxim Z270 Maximus 9 Hero motherboard with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz and that's Corsair's LPX brand. So memory's the same, motherboard's the same, we got the a AX860i power supplies the same, same storage. The only thing changed was the CPU. The i7 is running at 4.5, so all core turbo, and the Pentium is running at 3.7. So I know somebody out there, well, you should have downclocked the i7. No, because the i7 is what it is. So it's just there for comparison. Don't get too hung up on that. So just a quick rundown on the graphics cards that we use for this test. We stuck with the Radeon RX series line. So we've got the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 460 4GB OC model. We've got the Vision Tech RX 470 OC, and that's a 4GB model card. And then we have the Radeon, the XFX Radeon RX 480 8GB model, and that is an OC one. The 470 is bumped up to 1226, and the 480 up to 1288. Now, what we did do for these, the 470 and 480, is because they are reference design cards, we went ahead and applied plus 50% 
to the power limit so that the graphics cards would maintain their full speed so that it maintained the processors being the differential between the two setups. All right, so let's get with all of that out of the way. Let's jump into the games and let's see kind of where the performance lies. So we're going to start off with our only synthetic, which is Fire Strike. And we're focusing on the graphics score rather than the overall, because the overall is going to change depending on the physics score. So right off the bat, the with the 460, you're looking at a four point difference. Not worth arguing over. Moving to the 470, we see uh, 90 points worth of difference. And then the 480, we see uh, about 100 and less than 200 points difference. So as far as the Fire Strikes graphics, it looks as if though they're perfectly acceptable all the way across the board. But let's jump into games. We're going to start off with Titanfall 2. And the important thing we want to look at as we're looking at these charts is the 1% lows and the 0.1%. So Titanfall 2, all the way across the board, ends up with about the same averages ba um, between the i7 and the Pentium. So not a whole lot of difference there. Now the minimums, you do lose a bit on the minimums when you go up in class. So the 460, not a lot of difference. The 470, you're looking at uh, you know around 10 FPS on the, the minimum 1% low, 0.1% lows and then a much larger delta with the 480. And you're going to see that kind of prevail as we go on. So Doom actually uh, did a really good job handling the lower core counts using Vulcan at 1080p Ultra. And you see very actually almost no difference in the 460. The 470 is flat only until you get to the 480. And it seems like the 480 is just enough just enough of a video card to give the Pentium a bit of a struggle and cause it to trip up. So when it's waiting for instructions, it, it, it can't keep up with the 480. You get those lower 0.1% lows. And again, just keep an eye on those 0.1% lows as we go. Now, Ashes of Singularity, DX12, I know, of course, yes, it's, it's a benchmark. Not many people actually play the game, but it's a good representation of what happens when you with, with CPU. Now, you can clearly see in this one, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time in it. You can see that once you get to the 480, it's detrimental to the overall performance. So 460 is flat. 470, you do get better performance. Um, you do lose a lot on that. The averages, the minimums, not so much. But going from the 470 to 480 is, is actually counterproductive for this uh, class of processor. Resident Evil 7, the 460 is great. 470 came out really well, only 1 FPS on the 1% and 0.1% lows, but jump into the 480, again, it causes the CPU to trip up trying to run that much graphics uh, power from the graphics card. And yeah, you actually get a worse performance with the 480 than you do the 470. Uh, we see that sim a similar trend actually go across here now into Gears of War 4. You see the 460 does lose out a bit on the 1%, 0.1% lows. This is a very thread intensive game. Moving to the 470, it's very detrimental to only have four threads available on two cores and even more so with the 480. So it just simply can't keep up with that game. So Gears of War 4 is your game. It's something to think about there. Watch Dogs 2, I know that it's not exactly the most popular game, but it is a game that heavily utilizes the CPU and threading. And we see that here with the 460 being very modest, uh, very flat, if you will, just a little bit of loss on the Pentium. The 470 and 4, 480 actually take a pretty good beating all the way down from averages to 0.1% lows with the 480 actually coming in by far the worst than that. There you have it. Those are the results of our performance when it comes to synthetics and gaming with the processors and the graphics cards. So we can easily walk away telling that if you're going for a 460 with the Pentium, you're perfect. You're not going to lose anything. You're not, you're, you're not leaving any performance on the table. And this is a $64 chip and we're looking at about a hundred to $130 graphics card, which it makes sense. That's about the way you would do it. You want it to be fairly balanced. But stepping up to that 470, you need to be uh, mindful of those games that are extremely CPU bound, such as Gears of War 4, Watch Dogs 2, and as time goes forward, we're probably likely to see more of those. Now, if you're looking at this Pentium, I would never recommend using an RX 480. It actually yielded some of the most absurd results of the whole thing. It just went too far. 
with the Radeon line of cards. So the 470 really is the sweet spot. The 460, you're not gonna lose any performance. You can get away with a very low cost gaming build, especially if you're just getting into PC gaming or you're building it for somebody that likes to light game. Um, but at the end of the day, you still have a dual core quad threaded chip. So you have to remember those. So if you run a lot of background tasks and stuff that that could eat in into processing power, but 460, 470, you seem to be pretty good, save for those couple of instances with the 470. 480 can, will not recommend to ever be used with the Pentium G4560. It's just, it's too much graphics card for the processor, and then you're out of balance. Anyway, if you want the 480, get a better processor. All right, guys, that's been Keith with WCCF Tech TV, and that's all we have for you today, and we will catch you all in the next video. Let us know if you're looking forward to the same performance using the GeForce cards in the Pascal lineup. Say for the 1070, we still don't have one of those. Those things are expensive just to buy for these tests. All right, guys, we'll catch you all in the next one.